Despite rain pouring down in torrents, the streets were crowded with people. The citizens of Cleveland returned to their homes with the consciousness that they had paid the last tribute of respect to a great and good man in a proper manner. On April 15, 1865, the nation was sent into shock as the news of the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln was dispatched throughout the nation across telegraph wires and on newspaper headlines. People who had been in the midst of celebrating the conclusion of four years of brutal war were thrown into mourning and confusion. At the time, there was no national protocol for dealing with the assassination of a president. Arrangements were hastily made by government officials to honor the slain leader and to convey his body back to his hometown of Springfield. Four years earlier, in 1861, after Lincoln had won the presidential election, he undertook an eastward journey from Springfield, Illinois to Washington, D.C. for his inauguration, stopping in many major American cities along the way, including Cleveland. It was determined that the president's final trip home should mirror a similar route. After the president's body was embalmed, it lay in state first in the East Room of the White House and then in the Capitol Rotunda. Following a funeral procession throughout Washington, D.C., his body was transported to the Baltimore and Ohio Rail Depot, where it was placed on board a specially designed train car. On April 20th, his body left Washington for the final time. It was taken first to Baltimore, then Harrisburg, Philadelphia, New York City, Albany, and Buffalo, the reverse of his triumphant 1861 journey. In the early hours of April 28th, it reached the border of Ohio, the entourage stopped first in Wycliffe to pick up additional passengers, including Ohio Governor John Bruff, General Joseph Hooker, and Senator John Sherman, before undertaking the last leg of the journey to Cleveland. In the days prior, thousands of people from around Northeast Ohio arrived in the city for the funeral. When the train arrived in the station promptly at 7 a.m., a salute of artillery fire rang out throughout the crowded streets. The Camp Chase Band began playing solemn music as the coffin was taken out of the car and borne to the hearse on the shoulders of the veterans' reserves. The hearse was drawn by six white horses up Euclid Avenue towards Public Square through throngs of onlookers. Colonel James Barnett and his assistants conducted the procession. According to one contemporary account, a slight rain fell, dripping like tears on the remains of the good man in whose honor the crowd had gathered. Not a single house along Euclid Avenue from the depot to the square did not display some symbol of grief. Floral displays decorated storefronts, windows were draped with fabric, and prominent individuals displayed messages of mourning on their homes. The streets were lined with a continuous wall of people, all braving the rain and mud, to mourn. Upon reaching Public Square, a salute was fired to signify the arrival of the slain president. The Right Reverend Charles Petit McIlvain, Bishop of the Diocese of Ohio, advanced to the coffin and read from the burial service of the Episcopal Church. Following that, mourners lined up on either side of the coffin and processed by without a break or pause. At 10 minutes past 10 o'clock at night, when the coffin was finally closed, over 100,000 people had bid farewell to the murdered president. After almost 12 hours, the president's body was conveyed back to the funeral train to continue its journey to Springfield. As the train departed Cleveland, rain fell in torrents. Despite this, bonfires and torches were lit, bells tolled, flags floated at half-mast, and the sorrowing inhabitants stood in groups, uncovered with saddened faces, gazing with awe and veneration upon the train as it moved slowly by. Much like during his first visit to the city in 1861, the people of Cleveland displayed an unfailing devotion to the principles embodied by the great emancipator. During those early days, as war and uncertainty brewed throughout the nation, Clevelanders gathered to wish their new president well. During this visit, he was said to have remarked, quote, you have assembled here to testify respect to the Union, the Constitution, and the laws. Let me say that it is with you, the people, to advance the great cause of the Union and the Constitution, and not with any one man. It rests with you alone. This fact is strongly impressed upon me at present. In a community like this, whose appearance testifies to their intelligence, I am convinced that the cause of liberty and the Union can never be in danger. 